This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. All right, back to Yuji's room. We haven't been here in a while. During my middle school days in America, I got a number of strange nicknames from my classmates, mainly because none of them could be bothered to remember a Japanese name. Ah, uh, sad but true. On the predictable side, there was Jap and Shorty. My family name Kazumi got abbreviated to KZ as well. However, among my numerous nicknames, the only one that stuck for basic training was Gar. Short for Garbage Eater. Wow. It's not that I had a reputation for dumpster diving. It was a reference to my tolerance for shitty food. As to how I earned it, the story is very simple. The KP made a slop unfit for pigs, and I ate it without grimacing. Freeze-dried scrambled eggs, pork and beans made from scraps of ham, bread with peanut butter, and ridiculously stringy mystery meat were the staples. Every one of them had a weird chemical aftertaste, and they were all disgusting. Rumor had it that the secret sauce was gasoline. As for the chocolate cake we got for dessert, it was more commonly and accurately described as a desert. That cake was legendary for being inedible. No matter how starved you were, it would end up stuck in your throat as a dry lump. But I ate it all. And all the rest, without complaining. Probably because I was living rough from a young age. I had never really been what you'd call a picky eater. To put it simply, as long as my belly was full and my body was getting ready to eat it, the taste wasn't a concern. That's a pretty good skill to have. So even those torturous meal, even those free torturous meals a day didn't inspire any serious complaints for me, but the people around me must have thought I was some sort of freak. And after a while, my nickname became Garbage Eater. Then eventually just Gar. They sound like lovely people. Hey Gar! Just how shitty of a cook was your mom? I had a set response to this one. My mom didn't cook much. She was too busy screwing your dad's brains out. As far as my jokes go, I thought it was kind of witty, but that line didn't get that many laughs. I guess my delivery was a bit too stony. <laughs> also, that's one of those Yo Mama jokes that's like... <laughs> can be taken a lot more harshly. Well then, what should I do for dinner? Culver's. You get you get Culver's. I don't particularly feel a desire to eat, but if you don't take meals, uh, take meals at three regular times a day, it throws off your body's clock and leaves you more susceptible to fatigue. To tell the truth, I view meals as nothing more than an element of my maintaining my physical condition. As long as I'm getting sufficient nourishment, I'm not that caught up on what or on when or what I eat. When I spend any effort considering things like that, all I end up thinking about is how much of a pain in the ass it's going to be to make something. And eventually, the act of eating itself starts to feel like a nuisance. My normal pattern is to just throw something together for my supply of canned and dried food. Hide under the bed. Was my room unlocked, or did you just pick the lock? Well, this is my room. Amine barges in like she owns the place, no longer even bothering to knock. But I'm already getting used to it, I guess. Probably because I've experienced a lot of emergency summons. It didn't really get me that much in the first place. As she speaks, I notice that Amine is holding a plate piled of crab legs in her hands. I do recall such an event. I also recall responding if I'm in the mood. Not that I'd definitely be there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I said that you and Makina should go ahead and eat if I didn't show up on time. I mean, I personally am not really a fan of seafood. Not really. Well, it is, it is a pain to peel off the shell. Well, bread is edible. <laughs> Probably just means that Makina places more importance on how easy it is to eat. Honestly, I think I'd go for crab paste over crab myself. Um, that's certainly true. Look, I wasn't really complaining, and I can take care of the shell on my own. Ah, uh, hey! Hands off! 
Amine's wandered off into my kitchen and is examining things as she pleases. After confirming the contents of my mess kit cooker, she opens the door to my refrigerator and starts taking stock of my supplies. Not my typical dinner. I opened it at lunch. Get off my back. Why is it that this feels strangely embarrassing? It's not like I have anything troublesome in the fridge. In the first place, where does she get off by calling canned radish this thing? It's well known among canned food connoisseurs as almost decent and pretty much edible. Is this woman looking down on the brave men and women who have gained courage from canned food throughout the years? As I silently burn with righteous indignation, Amine brazenly starts running tap water into my rice cooker. Ah! Hey! What do you think you're doing? I don't care if it's hard. Probably because I'm used to eating canned stuff that comes out arid and stiff as a wax candle. I'm pretty tolerant of tough food. I was going to eat those eggs for breakfast. <laughs> oh, Cookie Monster, I know I'm really hungry, and I know you won't help my mind if I help myself to three of them. Thanks a lot. I don't care, but what are you planning? I mean, she is... This is nice of her to cook for us. <laughs> well, I suppose pretty much anyone can handle fried rice. Especially for a woman. The somewhat prejudiced assumption is that you have a basic skill like that. Fact is, out of all of the women I've met so far, the only one who couldn't make edible fried rice was my master. <laughs> Still, I can't quite hide a certain anxiety. Not that Amine is paying attention, humming to herself as she cracks open the eggs. Oh, as a matter of fact, I don't want to be famous. Can you believe it? <sighs> yes, shocking as it is. No, I really don't want to be famous. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. After shaking salt and pepper onto the egg, she mixes in the lightly rinsed rice, and then adds bits of crab meat, only about half of what she brought, to a and finely chopped radish. She heats a frying pan coated with mayonnaise rather than oil, adds the lettuce and spinach she plundered from my fridge, and froze in the rice mixture according to her own timing. Sticking the back of the ladle into the mix, she vigorously clatters it around the frying pan, messily stir-frying the food. When Amine decides it's done, she uses the bowl as a mold to form the fry root rice into a perfect hemisphere and then tosses it onto the plate. This wouldn't look out of place in a Chinese restaurant. Dressing the leftover crab meat with the mustard and mayo, she drops it with a fud on top of the heap of fried rice on the plate. So she says, but it hasn't even been ten minutes since Amine started to cook. The imposing pile of steaming fried rice on my plate looks pretty damn impressive for something cobbled together out of leftovers and in such a short time. Not necessary. I've got what I need. The table is a small coffee table for one that Sachi dragged out of some storeroom as a stopgap measure. And the frying pan and what's tableware I have are things I picked out carelessly at the local 100 yen and hardware stores. But since I'm living alone, it's all perfectly adequate. No point in getting more dishes if I'm only eating off of one. Just means more things to wash. That's... that's valid. Noticing something as she speaks, Amine turn, returns to the kitchen and starts to rustle through a plastic bag in the corner. Hmm? Yes. I've been throwing my empty oolong tea bottles in that bag, and before I knew it, some I had something of a pile. But I was uncertain about the timing to throw them out. With well-practiced movements, she peels off the labels, removes the caps, and skillfully cuts off the plastic rings with the tip of a kitchen knife. Finally, she lightly rinses the bottles themselves of tap water. Judging from the smooth motion of her hands, she's repeated this often enough to gain the mastery of an assembly line worker. Clearly, she's something of an eco-friendly woman. See, I like this side of Amine. I just don't like the blatantly... <laughs> I, I, I probably shouldn't finish the phrase, but... I don't like her when she's blatantly, like, being overly sexy. No, I can take care of that much myself. Sorry for the hassle. 
ちゃんとこういうこともできるって見せておかないとただのエッチなお姉さんだと思われちゃうしね That is exactly the impression that I had of you With a quick goodbye, Amine heads out of the room, not waiting for my impressions of the crab fried rice. I had the idea that a busybody woman like her would be more likely to hang over my shoulder pestering me for compliments, but she just popped in all of a sudden, cooked for me in a flash, and then left just as quickly. It might be the influence of dealing with that whimsical machina all the time. Let's eat. Unfortunately, I don't have a Chinese spoon in this room, so I'll have to make do with the standard Western variety. I jab my spoon into the mountain of steamed fried rice and uh, throw some into my mouth. Hmm, not bad at all. Even someone as disinterested in food as me can tell when something tastes good. The, se the salt seasoning feels a bit thin, but this is probably how it should be if you're thinking about healthy sodium intake. Although it would be insulting to compare this to the crap my master made, it's also different from the stuff you get at a high-priced Chinese restaurant. It tastes like your standard fried rice. What's with this flavor? When I was living alone with my mother as a child, I remember eating fried rice that tasted like this. After finishing her day dot job, my mother would make me dinner before her night shift started. Oh, In the last week of the month before her paychecks came in, it would often be a pretty plain meal of fried rice. When all she could put on the table was fried rice with a bit of pink fish paste added, she would apologize as I ate. I'm sorry, this is all we've got. Aww. Unlike the fried rice Amine just made, there was never anything extravagant like crab thrown in, and Amine's cooking skills seemed to be better as well. So why is it that they taste similar? Where's this slight melancholy coming from? Well, it doesn't matter as long as it's good. When I was a kid, anything I ate tasted good. That part of me hasn't changed too much. Let's see, it's... Alright, uh, we, we can stream for a little bit longer. It's very dangerous to jump to the conclusion to, to conclusions about someone. When you make a judgment without sufficient information, you're going to be at least slightly off. Whether that's an over- or an underestimation, it clouds your perception, and it often comes back to bite you in the end. My employer is exactly the sort of organization that lives and dies by gathering accurate intelligence, and I hear a lot about its importance from my acid-tunned master as well. Therefore, I make a conscious effort not to label others prematurely. Um, hey Michiru, what are you doing? She's drinking from a juice box, and apparently it's too sour. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't have to drink that, that juice if it's too sour for you to handle. That said, every time this Matsushima Michiru girl enters my field of vision, I find myself dying to, sh dying to stick exactly such a mental label on her. Yo, Michiru. <laughs> I've been standing in front of you for a while now. Why are you acting like you just noticed? I see. Understood. But that utter lack of awareness might cost you your life someday. Please make sure you look both ways for cars before you cross the road. Oh, brother. I offered an appropriate warning, given your actions. Why the verbal abuse? Oh, jeez. Michiru vigorously froze the empty paper carton she was holding at me. Flying into a fit of rage just because someone tells you something you don't want to hear is not a good habit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Judging that I don't have a foothold in this conversation, I pick up the garbage Michiru hurled at me and temporarily withdraw from the scene. 100% vitamin C drink? Reading out the description printed on the carton, I tilt my head in amusement. I've seen plenty of 100% fruit juice drinks, but this is a new one. The parent company of this manufacturer is a pharmaceutical corporation. Maybe it's some sort of undiluted vitamin solution used in beauty products? Or maybe it's not meant literally, and they're just exaggerating to play up the fact that it's packed full of the stuff. Either way, it's a soft drink that emphasizes its vitamin C content above all else. Which means that it's probably incredibly sour and acidic. It must be torture to drink unless you've got a pretty strong tolerance for that sort of thing. So why was she drinking this stuff? I don't know, she probably thought it was just lemonade. From the look on her face, I don't think it was out of fondness for the taste. Some kind of self flagra flagellation? Maybe. 
Hi, Yumiko. Nice to see you, too. Interrupting my thoughts, Sakaki stares at me suspiciously. Yo, if it isn't human! Do you just sleep with that thing? Calm down. If you lose your sense of humor, you won't be able to live a fun life. <laughs> well, all right then. I see. In that case, it wasn't a nickname. Slip of the tongue. Happy now? Aggravating as I may be, Sakaki nonetheless approaches me. This? It's an empty soft drink carton. That blonde girl was drinking it earlier. Oh yes, I love collecting trash. It's just a hobby of mine. Is collecting this sort of thing as evil a hobby as that scowl implies? I'm interested. Please explain in detail. <laughs> For some reason, Sakaki is trembling with anger. Seems I still can't anticipate what will trigger this woman's wrath. Yeah, yeah. She's always drinking it? Right. I wanted to ask about that. Why is she drinking something that she so plainly hates? Did she lose a bet? Is she being bullied? Was she placed under a malevolent spell? Nope. Hey, he's weird. Alright, so correct me. Yeah, that's fair. And yet, I'm pretty sure you knew this was Michiru's carton before you asked. No, he mocks everyone. I was just trying to explore an apparent logical inconsistency. The wrinkles in Sakaki's forehead grow deeper and her glare sharper. If that's possible. Apparently, there are some logical inconsistencies best left unexplored when she's around. Specifically those concerning her contrary personality. Now that you mention it, it seems like she's always carrying those ramen candies around. <laughs> Romantically, no, but character-wise, very. Are you interested in knowing whether I'm interested in Michiru? <laughs> With an extremely displeased expression, Yumiko leaves the roof. There sure are a lot of troublesome girls in this place. After spending a little time sharing the dorm with her, it's pretty obvious that everyone in this place has a few screws loose, and probably a few skeletons in the closet as well, hopefully just figuratively. Amine and Sakaki aren't easy to deal with in the first place, and there seems to be more to them than they're letting on. The same is probably true of Makina and Sachi. That said, when it comes to that blo bottle blonde girl, no matter how many times I try to look below the surface, I keep hitting rock bottom right away. If she's got any hidden depths, they're very well hidden. In other words, I've got a persistent suspicion that she's an idiot. Still, it's too early to label her. I should bide my time and get a better idea of her personality before reaching any conclusions. But seriously now. Hmm. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm not spying on you, I just happen to be here. Leaving that aside, are you drawing the character for person on your hand? That's a pretty stale superstition. It's the placebo effect. Heartburn and indigestion? Sure, might come in handy sometime. Oh boy. Sachi, are you aware of the placebo effect? I thought the drawing on your hand thing was supposed to calm you down before a big public speech or whatever. Since when did it become a replacement for Azuline Sulfa? Azuline Sulfonate Sodium. Mm-hmm. You're pretty cruel, Sachi. 
Uh, never mind. Ooh! Casual outfit for Michiru. I, I actually kind of like that one. どうしたの昨日、浜根に買ってきてもらったジュース。思いっきり賞味期限切れちゃってたわよ。うん、嘘。それはちゃんとチェックしてるわよ。ありえないってば。うん。本当よ。これ見てみなさいよ、ほら。
私の行動に逐一突っ込まないでって言ったでしょあと詳細に説明するのもやめてちょうだいああ私もう寝るなんだか怖くなってきちゃったってなんか寒くない今日そういえばちょっと冷え込んでますねくしゃみが出る前に暖かくして寝ないとそんじゃおやすみなのよさお兄ちゃんもチルチルのことを忘れていい夢を見るのよ。That's simultaneously very mean and very nice. Is it really okay to just forget about her? No, it's not. <laughs> the next morning. Having finished my usual morning routine, I'm waiting for the others in the lobby. But for some reason, nobody's showing up. Everybody's late at once? Seems like a bit too much of a coincidence. The pattern so far has been Amine and Makina noisily arriving first, followed by Sachi and Michiru noisily arriving second, with Sakaki sullenly arriving last. The normally rowdy morning is bizarrely quiet today. <laughs> oh no, is everybody sick? Just as I'm thinking this, Amine appears around the corner of the hallway. She's hunched over, hiding the obab she's so proud of. Her hair is sticking up in places, and her skin seems rough. I don't think that's how that works. You look bad. Your beloved obobs are all shriveled. Of course, I'm just screwing with you. What kind of a cold would cause obobs to shrink? I haven't heard of that one. Understood. I'll do my best. Where are the others? What are the odds that everyone catches the same bug except us? So we're waiting on the other three. As I speak, someone appears around from around the corner. Oh no, it's not Sachi! Sachi, the next to arrive, has an equally severe case of the sniffles. Her maid uniform is disheveled, bringing to mind certain cheap Japanese pornos. Wow. I thought Sachi was young and invincible. We don't live in barbarian days. I don't think there were many historical periods where catching a cold was punishable by death, Sachi. This is all of us so far. Makin is unconscious in her room. Sakaki. Just as I was speaking, I hear the sound of dragging footsteps from around the corner. <sighs> it's obvious from a look at Yumiko's face that she's in bed, bad shape herself. She must be pretty out of it since she hasn't noticed that her socks are strangely bunched up at the toe. Her hair is a bit of a mess, too, with loose strands bouncing around at every step. <laughs> Mind if I ask what I'm supposed to be leaving? Understood. I won't comment on your bunched up socks or those stray hairs you've got all over the place. Wow, bullying the dragon, bro. Yumiko's forehead is creases in the usual way as she straightens her hair and fixes her socks. But the powerful aura of rage that normally accompanies her scowls isn't there. Yeah, I'm kind of invincible. I'm a robot. Staying healthy is part of my job. Michiru's either very well or very sick. At the very moment, everyone was imagining a certain face. Michiru dramatically appears in the hallway, as if she'd been lying in wait for the right moment to make her grand entrance. Probably because she had, in fact, been lying in wait for the right moment to make her grand ex entrance. She jabs a finger out at us in an apparent attempt at an impressive pose. You're negligee? I'm not sick. Also, did you mean negligent? Honto ni anta tatu jitsui naku ne. Jitsui naku. 
Ignoring me and her own poor grasp at the language, Michiru continues to harp on the negligee group. You're, you're just asking for it, Michiru. Likewise, ignoring Sakaki's crankiness, Michiru reaches into the pouch she's carrying, takes out a variety of boxes and plastic pouches, and places them on the common room table. Oh, that, that, was that was nice of you, Michiru. In a truly rare spectacle, the group obediently follows Michiru's orders. The girl seems overjoyed, almost disturbingly so. <laughs> this has happened before? That's possible. Poisoning. You might not be too far off of that hypothesis. It's just that you aren't the ones being poisoned here. Huh? Michiru tilts her head in honest puzzlement. A daily vitamin C intake on the level of self-poisoning, a sleep and activity schedule like that of a grade schooler, and a naturally tranquil, vacant mind. Combining all of these factors, it's no wonder she doesn't get sick often. Maybe she's actually a secret genius. Although her words sound defiant, Sakaki also obediently takes advantage of Michiru's kindness. Even if her willpower has been weakened by the cold, it doesn't seem like the Sakaki I know. I see. I've gotten something of a new perspective on this girl. Honestly, there's no mistaking the fact that she's an idiot. But without a doubt, she's a necessary idiot for this place. Among this strangely precocious bunch, Michiru is a complete outlier in her lifestyle patterns and thought processes. I guess her presence actually helps balance out the group in a way. Ah. There's plum flavored porridge? That does not sound very good. You're so asking for it. Above all, I'm seriously surprised by the way something vaguely resembling friendly feelings seems to be temporarily present between her and this box-cutter woman. Sakagi's apparent interest in Michiru also seems to hint at some sort of positive emotion. Michiru might have some sort of mysterious charm in her own right. What? Oh, wow. This is so fitting for the for the last year. What the heck? I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be the people who are sick should wear the face masks, not the people who are healthy. Yeah, I'll take one. Taking the mask Michiru thrusts out at me, I return to my room. There are parts of people you can't judge from a unified perspective. Trivial as it might seem, I've picked up another bit of knowledge at this school. Alright, well, as fun as it would be to watch her drink more juice, I think I'm going to call the stream there. Also, is there a way for me... Aha! Save. Boom! Awesome. We actually don't need the autosave. We can do manual saves now. Alright, that was a fun stream. Thanks everyone for joining in. I hope people enjoyed watching this, and I'll be streaming this again, same time, Saturday 1pm next week. So, hope you all have a great rest of your day, and God bless.